Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, thank you uh, for, for, for making the time for this, man. Uh, it's my pleasure, man. I, I, I'm not even just saying that for real. It, it's, it's, it really is my pleasure to do this. Oh, thank you so much. So yeah, this is episode mm. uh, of, of the Hunja Active Wellness Podcast. And um, the word wellness is added in there. Um, and a lot of people that have asked to do this have, have shied away from it because of the word wellness. You know, because they're just like, hey, dude, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not even there yet. Like, <laughs> who am I to, 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 to speak on wellness? But uh, I, so I, it's not just me. It's not just you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was my initial reaction. I was like, wait, what? Not me? What? <laughs> I, think... I, I didn't even show up for workouts this week, man. Why are you? Oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh man, it's 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 really just one of those things that I I think if if you have um it's very very like what, what's the word I'm looking for very cheesy uh, to say but if 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 you're alive then you have some form of wellness or at least you are aware of of your wellness uh, whether it's going well or it's not going well these are the conversations that I'd like to have on this podcast just. Uh, to, to humanize the whole wellness approach. Because um, I think I, I am one of those people whose Instagrams, like people go through and they're just like, it's too much. It's, it's <laughs> but um, if, if I if you read between the lines, there's so much pain and so much disease and so much um, right. um, anxiety and, and oh, lots, lots, lots of issues that have led me to. Those are all the stepping stones that, that, that I, I, I stepped on to, to get to, to, to this point. And I feel like I am nowhere near where I should be. And there's times I feel like I'm completely square one. I completely messed up. And I look at old pictures. Man, I don't look like this anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's a journey. And, and uh, I reached out to you, to, to you because I think you had an amazing journey um, with your career and um, with the people, the lives that you touch um, in, in so many different ways. Um, just reading your work and seeing your work and seeing you perform um, and seeing you grow uh, because I think our listeners don't know, but you are my Bible study leader. What what year was that? Like, <laughs> okay. yeah, I remember the ex- I remember the exact year. It was um, it was between two thousand six and two thousand seven. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. So, just, just. I, I, I remember, I remember dropping you home once at uh, Kahawa West. I, I think we had gone for a, uh, hey man, because I was such a Jesus kid then. Um, I, 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 I remember. I, I can't remember whether it was a concert or something. And I, I, I even did due diligence in asking permission on on your behalf. Um, and then, and then we went for this thing, and I dropped you off at at Kahawa a little, a little late. And, and just to avoid you driving, I, I remember giving you a ride there, and then your famo was very gracious, and I was invited in for tea, yes. and I got to hang out with your dog. Yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. That, that, was, that was a good time, man. A good time. It was, it was a very good time with, uh, with Jeanette and uh, Ben. Yes. Oh, man, yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was a good crew of people, man. Very good crew. And I think we, like, we did, like, Bible study in the first, like, like there was an icebreaker, how was your weekend? Then you do Bible study for 20 minutes and then for two hours. <laughs> it's just fun time. It's just, yeah, just to rose. Just oh, man. Just to rose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I, I've known you long enough, but I think that there's a period where, um, a, a period of your life that I've gotten to know after the fact, like from watching. Um, uh, like the recent uh, uh, talk you did for Engage, which was brilliant, by the way. That was fantastic. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And and just you know our recent conversation. So it's just 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 a conversation to hear about um, the man that is and and why why he is and and, and what what you've been through over the last couple of years. Um, and you know, okay. you're a, you're a, you're a client. So you're an athlete of Funja Active. Um, and you, you, you push yourself um, 
as as much as you can within reason <laughs> um, and um, just talking about like what led you uh, to taking care of yourself from a physical standpoint uh, right and and also how it's how it's bridged into your your mental um, health as well so on and so forth right 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 okay Ooh. got it all right let's do this man Introduce yourself um, and just uh, give people a few nuggets of who Mogash is. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Mogam Bintega. Um, I am a filmmaker, a storyteller. I like to uh, uh, tell stories about the things I know, the things that I've experienced, the things that I've had other people experience. And I tell these stories through way of, uh, by, by, by way of film, uh, primarily. I, I started off in the ad industry. Um, that after I got out of campus, that's really where I got into first. Uh, but then I made a transition into, my, my dream was to act full time. Um, it, it was a bit of a lofty dream. It didn't, it didn't really work out as expected. Uh, but then by just chasing that little dream of being an actor in, in Kenya, a successful actor, in Kenya, in Africa, around the world. Uh, I got introduced to writing, like actually writing for the stage and for the screen. I uh, wrote a couple of stage plays, a couple of musicals, and that led to writing for film. Um, and then as the love for film grew, um, as the love for uh, the, theater, the theater stage grew, I, I found that I could also direct. And um, yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing since. Uh, so the, the, the reason I like to say storyteller is um, I, I, th I think the question, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure if someone asked you what you do, your question would go from the stuff that you do on the daily, but then as you continue answering, it will grow to something bigger. Um, it might morph into something that you exist for or something that uh, you've discovered that you, the world needs that you've got, you know. And um, I've only just recently discovered that a lot of my storytelling passion comes from um, my memories and my processing of those memories. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think it was a big deal until someone pointed out, like, I don't understand how you can remember things to such detail. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for instance, remembering hanging out with your family and your, I can't remember the dog's name, the black, it was a black, tiny black dog. Abby, was that his name? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is, is Abby still around? I'm sorry for asking. Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. oh, well. I think it was Lulu. We had happy then. Oh, Lulu. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah small, small black dog who liked getting belly rubs. Yes. And you guys would rub, rub, rub uh, Lulu's belly with your feet, which was very cute. Yeah. And she'd turn to the side and smile. It was very nice. So I remember stuff like that to detail. And, and I didn't think that it was really any big deal to it. I, I, I honestly thought that this is how people processed things uh, through memory. But then, you know, someone said, yo, like, like there's something really interesting that you've got there. So I realized, okay, well, if I'm able to have like a lit literal memory bank, like a memory, a life memory bank, uh, then maybe I can use that for the well uh, for, from which to start like um, uh, uh, fetching stories. Yeah. And, and that's what I've been doing. And then that's, that's a really, really uh, gratifying experience. Um, the reason I say storyteller is because it's not restricted to film. It's not restricted to the stage. It's not restricted to TV. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to your t-shirt. Um, it's, it's, it's also, uh, it's, it's, it's restricted. It's, it's not restricted at all. Even, even, even this conversation that we're having right now is storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, your life in and of itself is a story. Mm -hmm. Mine is a story itself. And I, I think what I'm existing to do now, as I discover is, is just to amplify the more positive stories and um, address the more negative ones. Because behind any movement, behind any, um, behind any, uh, uh, a uh, uh, paradigm shift within any change of perspective, within any revolution, there's always a story at the bottom of it. Yeah. And um, you amplify the storyteller, amplify the story and you'll amplify whatever. I, I, I look at the case of America right now. America is a country that has decided to exist on the basis of certain false narratives about how it was formed and about how it came into being and about what it stands for. Uh, the definition of freedom, for instance, has been just turned around because you have the wrong storytellers addressing what freedom means. Yeah. Look at the story of Kenya. And Kenya is just, you know, if you look at our history books, for instance, um, what, was, what was the history that we were given about the Kenya that we live in? Uh, we were told as kids that, you know, 
that you know Kenya is about peace, love, and unity, and we are a country that's founded on these principles. And we used to recite the national pledge, which was a story. <laughs> the national pledge was simply a story about how we relate with our country. We didn't know the meaning of the words, but every single Friday, we literally, by rote, like robots, <laughs> recited this loyalty pledge. Little tiny innocent kids who had no idea what the hell they were saying were, were telling a story of the loyalty to their country, no matter what, you know? Um, well and if, that, that you went through as, as, as Kenyan kids. Yeah. Exactly, it's true. I, I, I would never have realized until a few people start to point it out and say, "Man, we had some really, you know, like some really theatrically traumatic upbringings." And I'm like, "Really? Come on, I'm fine." Like, you know, what every Kenyan says, "Man, it turned out fine." And you're like, "I know you did not." That, that um, me, it turned out fine. Hey, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best angle to look at your life. Nah. Yeah, yeah. No, gosh, no. You probably didn't. Um, so, 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 you know, all of this happens through stories and. I'm re I really exist for 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 storytelling, and and that's 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 my passion. It's the reason I got into advertising. It, I literally, on one of my old 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 um, I don't know if it was like CVs or whatever, I said I want to get into advertising and I want to work in the big industries, yeah. uh, big agencies because I want to uh, tell good brand stories. And I'm like, oh wow, okay, so I guess that's what we were doing before. Mm -hmm. But you keep finding a way to express this need. To tell stories and I, I, I think um, our performing arts is where it's at for me right now. Uh, who knows what's going to morph to later on. I think I've learned from the likes of, of, of you and so many other people that you can just keep reinventing yourself while keeping the same um, through line, uh, just yeah, yeah. Uh, um, advancing and, 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 and inspiring your next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful, mm -hmm. and beautifully put. Um, and I think like I resonate with that because uh, I'm always telling people and I always, I always say it, um, it, 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 we were all born with a light inside us that we, we have to share in one way. Sure, yeah. We have to share that light in one way or another. Um, and you, you've mentioned- Absolutely. Yes, ways that you, you've shined that light, but they have the same tool and of storytelling. Um, when, have you, when have you felt like your light has shown uh, the brightest? Um, is it a period of your life? Is it when you're on stage? Is it a particular performance, a particular uh, movie or, or piece of work that you're putting together? When have you felt that light just boom, you know? Oh, that's a really good question. Wow. Yo, uh, okay, so, um, yeah, I mean, there's the, ah, yeah, that's a, yo, okay, that one is gone. You, you're taking me back. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of tiny moments. I, I, I'll, I'll speak about a couple that really stand out, really, really, really stand out for me. Um, I, I, I always knew, I knew from a little, from, from when I was tiny, I knew I wanted to act. Um, I, I, it's, 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 a, it's a whole long story, but let's, let's just say by some circumstances, by a series of events, I ended up on a stage at age five. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and 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 there was there was something really special about not being, you know, I, I was a firstborn boy in 1980s Nairobi, and the rule then was little boys ought to be seen and not heard. So you you you, you spent most of your life being shushed, uh, being told sit down, settle down. Da, 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 what was all this energy for? Da, 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 da. But for the first time, I could get up on a stage, yeah. and I was actually encouraged to do more of the things that in real life you're told don't do. Just like louder, louder, you know, um, uh, beat that drum harder, you know, like push, push. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Wait, and people get to watch me do these yeah. things. Like I, I, I get to act up, uh, act up um, in front of an audience and it drives them wild. Um, um, my, I, I, I tell this story all the time that my mom and my sister in the audience, my sister was only three at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom, very, very supportive uh, force, um, had taken time off work to come and watch this because it was in the middle of the day mm -hmm. uh, and she and she came with you know went home and picked up my sister and got on a job and they came to the little church where we were performing it and they watched it and i was like this is magic yeah. um i i have not i don't know what what's going on here i was just following instructions the teacher was by the side making me keep count because i was beating a drum but i was like this is actually pretty awesome and look what it does to my mom and my sister man they're going crazy it's wonderful 
Um, so that I think really got the journey started. Um, fast, fast forward to when I was um, in the teenage years, you know what those years are like when you're trying to define who you are. Um, I went to a very, um, if uh, how how to say, uh, I, I went to Saint Andrew's Church, mm-hmm. and Saint Andrew's Church was a very very interesting ecosystem of many things. Um, there was the it, there was like your pious religious religious you know, you know that was Presbyterian, uh, but there was also this sort of <laughs> wait I, I, wait are you Presbyterian as well? I know. <laughs> oh right, okay. Because I'd be like, yo, there's some special things that go on there, man. Yeah. Like we're not we're not exactly Catholic, but there's a sort of like piety and routine uh, that we that we have that they have uh, that um, that you sort of got into pretty yeah. early. Yeah. Um, and and now mix that with the fact that we're still a very um, well, this was the '90s, so this whole um, charismatic movement was coming up. Um, but then St. Andrews was also, was also a church with really wealthy people mm. who consequently had very wealthy kids who we'd go to Sunday school with. And it was the wealthy kids who called the shots as to what coolness was. Mm-hmm. And I always was so fascinated by how even our youth leaders would look the other way when one of the rich cool kids was saying something that wasn't entirely abiding by Christian values, you know, but because they had the money and they had powerful parents and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so it was very, very, very restrictive it was a very freeing space, but also very restrictive. Uh, you were always afraid of falling on the wrong line of what was cool. So I remember once um, signing up for this um, a bunch of performances that were going to be happening over the course of, um, uh, you remember this stuff was popular before concerts became the thing over New Year's, your church organized a thing from 31st to the morning yeah. of the first. That stuff was really popular. And it wasn't like the big concerts that they put on now it was little like it was skits you know little tiny performances that were for a much smaller crowd yeah. and i signed up and and memorized lines and got up on stage and i was like yo man screw it let's let's just have a good time mm-hmm. and i did not expect the response skit after skit we 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 we, we had a uh, we had missionaries come in, they'd give us drama books with little skits, very American type skits, very British type skits, which we'd try and adapt. Okay. And I performed a couple of them. Uh, one of them has Adam on the phone. With, with, it was fun youth skits. So one of them was Adam on the phone with God, uh, with God saying, yo, nigga, what's up, man? Like, what did you do? You ate that thing. I told you not to do it. Yeah. And and Adam starts making excuses and then he hangs up on God and God's voice is still there and he's like, yo, I just hung up on you, man. What's up? It's place like those. Yeah. And I had such a good time. Dude, man, I I never felt so at home. And one person came up to me and said, yo, dude, so, yo, can I get your autograph in advance? Because when you end up in Hollywood, I never had my name in Hollywood in the same sentence, even if I'd wanted. But I, I just seeing how people lit up and how even in the most tiredness, you know, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you get up on stage and act out and people wake up and they clap and applaud. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Um, really tiny moments, but they sort of lead you in the right direction. And that's when I felt like there's a light. This, this light is really shining and, 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 it, and it exists for something bigger than myself. Yes. Um, the last time I felt that was when we were doing the Mboya, the Tuali for Birds Mboya edition, which I still insist is still one of my proudest pieces of work for many reasons. I'll get into that much later on because I'm still processing all that stuff. But again, seeing people rise, it's, ah uh, man, Isaac, there's something magical about seeing, again, I'm sure you'll understand what I'm, what I'm saying. There's something magical about seeing something that you do return humans to their purest most primal state and and i saw the work do that it 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 unleashed such a purity of humanity in people that when we finished the play people just rose to their feet Mm -hmm. and they weren't rising to their feet just because you know we'd put together a pretty decent theater production they rose to their feet because this was their story as well and they felt like they were co-storytellers um, I feel the same. I feel the same way every time we get onto stage to do because he said so. Because as as an improv coach once told us, as the BYSS, because he said so. Cast um, the thing that pleases people the most is not the fact that you made them laugh. Mm-hmm. Making people laugh is pretty easy, and trying to mine for laughs is 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 easy. But that's not the point. The point is, are you going to go up there and create an experience with people and make them feel like? 
man, we co-created something, a little piece of work, whether it lasts 30 seconds, 15 seconds. Heck, some, some jokes on BOSS have lasted like all of five seconds and the crowd is like know. passing out. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and and being ushering people into that place where you sh share this this experience together mm -hmm. you start to realize that this light that uh, and I quote the Bible sometimes as much as I don't um, I, I don't uh, I, it's a radical statement but I don't ascribe to the system of Christianity yeah yeah I, I still believe a lot of the words of the Bible are very very true so so I, I wish that I had looked at a verse that says you shall let your light shine before men that they might see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't mean being a good, pious Christian and God bless you. Uh, Brother Isaac, how are you? Mm. Um, um, uh, how is Sister Umi, your dog? No, no it's none of that stuff. It's, it's, it's all about like that, that thing that was put inside you. Are you, are you going to stoke that fire and are you just going to let it burn and present it to people? so that their own fire can burn. The reason they're praising, praising your father in heaven is not that um, you're, uh, they, they, they look at the things you do and think, oh my God, you're such an awesome person. It's like, oh my God, look at that light that's lighting me up as well. Isn't this just an amazing thing that we have this light that exists in us that we can share with each other. Um, which is why I love your question. It's, that's what it felt like to be in those moments, to be a five year old, uh, to be the little, um, the teenager who was, very very shy and withdrawn and very self-conscious to get up on stage and just act out and see people react uh, to see people react during a because you said so show and laugh to see people rise into their feet during tomboy to watch people watch supermodel and see them rise and give it ovations all of that stuff that's that's your light that's shining cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. wonderful cool. feeling that's brilliant because because like and energy can is not created it just flows right Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, like seeing production or seeing a performance, it could even just be a dance performance or watching someone uh, give a, a soliloquy or whatever it may be. Seeing that come out and seeing uh, hundreds, thousands, millions of people react to it in a positive or negative way is 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 mind blowing to me because it's that that person. Yeah, it is. Yeah at desk by themselves and they produced this piece of work and they said people are going to see it and they saw it and they reacted to it and you've done this over and over and over again over your lifetime which is just super commendable man super super commendable hey thank you uh yo half half the time when we're doing it we don't even know we're doing it you're just showing up to work ah dude i'm talking i'm talking your language now um <laughs> Half, half the time it's just it's just, you're just you're just showing up for work and and taking the next step and doing you know what what is what does the next step require of me um am i going to show up for that as much as i did for the one before uh you know with all the uncertainty and everything um just just showing up and being able to do that it's it's like this multiply effect it's, it's yeah. beautiful to watch yeah so there's 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 always a sliding scale with these things and one of the um things that i i i feel is, is such a determinant for the quality of work that you put out is your authenticity to it, right? Um, ah. So have you ever felt like you're on the complete opposite end of authenticity when you're producing some piece of work? Um, it could be like um, when you are working in an agency, yes, like, man, I'm producing this because I can say, this is not my light, I'm saying, this is just, this is just me showing up to your goal. Um, so have you felt this period of your, of, of your career or some, some piece of work you put out and you didn't feel connected to it, even though the world reacted in a positive way uh, to, to what you put out? Hey, man, easy maswali zako bana. Ish, okay. Ish, ish. Haya maswali bana. Yes, yes, of course. And, and you sort of like went straight to it and you talked about, um, when you talked about um, agency, uh, uh, that uh, agency. Uh, how, how, let me let me see how to put it. Agency is um, when when you talk about working in a creative agency. Mm -hmm. What 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 a creative agency um, requires you to do? I, I don't even know how those words are together. We it's almost like we are the owners of the light, mm -hmm. and we can dispense it at will. Mm -hmm. 
And even if we don't have the real light, we will dispense this very fake artificial light. And, and, and even if it gives an artificial reaction, um, it still worked, um, which is why advertising uses numbers. These are the number of people that saw our ads. These are the number of people that reacted to our ads. This, this is our sales curve. So this, this creativity um, is then boiled down to how much, it's like lightning in a bottle. How much, how much can we just dispense of it? And it's really a soul killing thing when the fun, spontaneous act of creating um, is replaced with the more mundane, more um, regimental act of, of having your work fall within certain lines. Now, this is not to slam creatives. This is not to slam advertising. Advertising does fulfill a certain function. Um, but I think, um, and, and my sort of like come to Black Jesus moment during, um, hey, I just came up with that. Yeah. Come to Black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> so my come to Black Jesus moment was uh, uh, when I was at, uh, um, on a particularly busy day at, 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 at agency and, um, I worked at Ogilvy. I actually still have my desk plaque, um, um, which, which has my name on it. Oh, nice. This is Ogilvy. This is my extension number. Okay. Um, and then they put your 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 nickname and then your actual name. Okay. Um, I still keep it here because it's still important part of my life. But but literally, I was sat at my desk and everyone was going crazy about this commercial that was supposed to run the next day, and. Um, and um, if you've watched uh, Face Off, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, one, one of the most popular scenes in Face Off is when um, uh, this, this kid is in the middle of a shootout and he has his headphones on mm -hmm. and he's listening to Somewhere Over the Rainbow um, and watching people just get massacred around him. Yo, mm -hmm. the 90s were a whole other lifetime, man. Yeah. You, could, you could put that in a movie, man. Yeah. You could watch a kid w literally watching people die yeah. and everything is fine because he's he's listening to somewhere over the rainbow by his headphones yeah. um, and you know it was like it, it was like people dying it was john woo film so it's people dying in such like you know bullets flying everywhere and and people dying and and this kid was just like watching and going wtf um that was me everyone was reacting and i just like i had this moment it's like you know when the plane rises above the turbulence, you're like, what are we doing here? Everyone is going crazy because of a spot that, a, 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 a full page ad that hardly anyone is going to read. It's not gonna matter in a week that we put that up there, but everyone is running around like their lives depends on it. Yeah. You know, when did we become these people? Um, and that's, I, I think, you know, to answer your question, I think that's when I saw that this very, very artificial light, as much as it fulfills certain things, is not fulfilling. Mm. I've had many such feelings um, all through my life. Um, I, I think if every, every person is honest about certain moments of their childhood, there's always moments you can pinpoint where we get a feeling that the world that we're being presented is not the real one because you sort of have an idea of what's, of what's real and what's true inside, mm. you know, but you ha you'll have various authorities in your life tell you, yo, listen, this world is messed up you need to survive and to do that you're going to have to put on certain things and those things unfortunately these garments that we put on are covering the light you know yes. and and you start realizing that why why do i feel so unfulfilled and so those those have been a part of my life all through and i, I like to tell people you don't know where your light resides keep going back to those parts of your life that are always gnawing at you somehow the stuff that makes you most afraid and I like that you talked about that in your in your in your TEDx talk. Um, in in the middle of your discomfort, that's where uh, where was it? That's where the what lies. I can't remember how you put it. It is the very last line in your talk. Uh, but it was something about something like in the middle of your discomfort. That's where that's where the real quantum leaps in your life are happening. Yeah. And the reason why that is is because the real the truth the, the light needs to confront this culture that you've grown up with, and those need to face off and they need to call each other out. You need to shine your light even on the bits of you that are dark. And that's not easy. Yeah. Um, uh, so um, going through those uneasy times as a kid, like part of the reason why I was so awkward and so it was, I was like, I don't understand how everyone is able to put on this facade so easily. I'm not able to, um, I can only be me. 
So when people berate you for being you, you withdraw and you get into your shell. Um, but then when you start letting that little light out and you see how it's blessing people, you're like, oh, shucks, man. So this thing that I was made to feel bad for having, for yeah. possessing, is actually the thing that the world needs. Hey, Amen. Need. I feel like I've yapped. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so we're having this discussion, man. This is a, this is a yap. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a... Uh, you have said a lot and I keep thinking of different questions, but the one I the one I keep coming down to is yeah. Um as you put out work, as you shine your light, as you as you keep it's like opening Pandora's box and closing, open and closing, open and closing. Um because as you get as, as you shine your light and, and you get people's light back into your life and you have this positivity, there's a lot of negativity that comes with it, right? And and yeah. Sometimes that separation is 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 very hard to 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 to, um, to, to, to see, right? Or to yeah. Um, sometimes it's very easy to identify because the positive light is a lot more than darkness. Um, mm -hmm. so you know, more people that didn't like what you put out or thought you could have done it in this way or in a better in a better way. Um, but generally, how are you able, especially with your improv work? How are you able to keep going on the stage and shine your light, knowing that you could bomb, knowing that uh, today could be the night that you know you could be booed on stage, or the work that you put out and spend hours and hours on and and lots of resources on doesn't actually pan out. Um, I was listening to Bill Burr, you know Bill Burr, the comedian. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about if you're in a career that uh, is is uh, whose, whose success is determined on people's reaction to what you put out, then it is one of those careers that just is full of anxiety. Um, so how yeah. how do you deal with that? Because you're not an accountant, you're not uh, <laughs> you're not an auditor. You know, you have to put yourself out there. Constantly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Also, uh, another awesome question, man. Um, I, I, I like that you brought up BYSS because that's where the answer is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have performed at least before Corona. Uh, we had been on stage for about six years, I believe, close to six years. Oh, am I? Yeah, close to six years because it would have been six years in May. That's crazy. Um, yeah, man. I, I still can't. I can't tell you where all the time went, man. Um, and, and that means that we have gotten onto that stage a few dozen times because yeah. uh, we do one show every two months and we've done one show every two months pretty much without fail uh, from 2014. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I, I wish you I wish you could. I, 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 I do usually, uh, the backstage is a very sacred place for us. So we don't usually like let, we don't, we don't let people come in as much mm -hmm. if we have crew that need to be making us or that need to be checking do you need this do you need this um we allow them in but usually when they'll come into the room they'll see they'll know there's a vibe mm -hmm. now that vibe is not a pleasant one we're usually dying uh we're nervous um where uh, i always i always tend to just to almost like before every show and i'll turn to him and 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 we look at each other and just exchange a look of why do we do this like we almost die one, one time I remember an audience members walking into the place we were waiting and I could see their look on their faces were like, wait, 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 maybe we shouldn't have bought those tickets, man. Because we were losing it and we lose it visibly. We're jumping around and we're going like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't do it, I can't do it. You know, we're, we're doing push-ups, we're going over our lip sync songs. We, we don't look like a unit that is about to entertain people. We look so unprepared, so out of it. And this is literally just minutes before we get up on the stage. I mean, literally like 10 minutes before we get up on the stage. And then the music starts playing and uh, Yafes usually writes and records the intros and we usually get introduced on stage one by one. And, and Jason um, is always introduced last uh, because you know he's the host of the show. And um, I can't ever tell you that we're making the walk to the stage thinking I'm ready, I've got this. Never, never, ever, 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 ever. 
even by the time we're getting into our second or third segment, we still don't feel ready. We still don't feel like we're able to do this. Um, the thing that's required really is just for us to be there and put yourself in a position where the process needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Just put yourself in the position where this process begins mm -hmm. and, and leave that to, to whatever larger force exists outside of us. Mm -hmm. um, I, dude, I'm gonna quote the Bible again. <laughs> Good, man. Ah, man. I don't even know how this happens. Um, but then there's, 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 a, there's a capacity that I really, really, really like where Jesus talks about, um, and apparently when I was reading about this, um, a, lot, a lot of people talk about when you put the parable of the sower in context, uh, you put the parable of the sower in context by saying that the, the larger context to that context to that story is, yes, the, the seeds are going to fall in different places. Some are going to get eaten up by birds, some are going to sprout and get choked up, some are going to land on the good fertile soil. Uh, some are going to get trampled or something, I can't remember. Um, but the thing is, regardless of where that seed falls, it still possesses in it the power to sprout, regardless. regardless of what it that does not change the seed. So, so now G Jesus follows it up with another parable where he's talking about seed time and harvest. And he says, the, what is the work of the farmer? He puts it in the ground and then harvests. What happens in between has nothing to do with him. There's a process that exists that will take that seed from one stage to the other. And the farmer trusts that process. Why don't you trust that process in everything? Because this is how the universe works. So to, uh, this is my long roundabout way of saying, I can't ever tell you that, um, dude, it's the same thing with your workouts, man. Your workouts are a scary thing. I'm, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. I mean, that's the honest truth. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow at 7 a.m. and I'll, I'll find another excuse. Do I have to walk my dog? Um, was my dog being a nuisance? Was I too tired because I was doing something the night before? Did I not eat properly the night before? Am I too weak for this stuff? Can I just pick it up next? Then, um, 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 can I pick it up later on? Can I do the workout because it's available on video because you enable us to still work out later on in the day? I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy. I, I don't enjoy the 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 strain mm -hmm. of of having to move my bones mm -hmm. after not having moved them for two days. Mm -hmm. I I can foresee the end of the workout. I'm probably going to be on the ground sprawled, and there's going to be a puddle of sweat. But I don't feel like anything bef like that before. Mm -hmm. Just like when we're getting up on this stage, yeah. I don't feel that we're going to put on a good show. I don't. The reason the nervousness is there is because we are worried that we're going to bomb. And we've bombed. Isaac, we've bombed so many times. <laughs> um, it happens. It's, unav it's unavoidable. It's just the order of business. But then when the audience comes out to you, you realize, it comes out to you afterwards, you realize it wasn't about the bombing or the succeeding. It's just that you put yourself out there and created this space for people. That's it. So getting up on stage before BYSS, uh, getting onto my computer to write words. Dude, you know the a white page and a blinking cursor is the most scary thing. <laughs> it's I'm not terrifying. A, I'm not a writer, but I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure if we, before you're writing that business plan or, dis, or, or designing that workout for the week, you need to tap into an inspiration that is not accessible at that particular point in time. Yeah. You're, you're not going to wait for it to come. You just begin. You're not going to wait uh, until you feel like you can crack that joke. You've been called up on stage. Go. Um, it's 7 a.m. Um, Isaac just said, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And, and you're like, oh man, now we have to go into this whole warm up thing. Now I have to commit an hour of my life to just suffering. Yeah. I, have to, uh, I have to commit three hours of my life to getting up on that, getting, uh, you see now the BOSS setup is, we sit on chairs and you go up there and it's you and the world. Yeah. You've got people behind you, but it's you and the world and this is a make or break moment. This joke is either going to fly or it's going to flop. Yeah, yeah. For three hours. <laughs> For three hours you're doing that. <laughs> pause. You can't be like, hey guys, half time. <laughs> Let me go ask Nothing. And I'll be back. Nah. Yeah. You just keep going. You keep going. But you, you've got six other people behind you who are there like supporting and rooting for you. And you've got a few hundred people who are rooting for you on this set. Yes. Um, I, I, it's, I, if, if I'm starting the process of writing a movie, 
which is years of work or, or starting to direct a, a stage production or, or starting to write a treatment for a commercial, um, you're talking about weeks, months or years of not knowing how everything is gonna turn out. Yes, literally, dude. Yes, Katikati was, Katikati was two years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 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 the salary was much shorter. But it was about a year and a half, but it's a year and a half of you putting yourself out there and always. Oh, without knowing. Is this gonna work? Is this gonna work? <laughs> yeah. 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 No idea. So that is the point at which you have to trust a bigger process than yourself to take over. Um, that, that's when you need to depend on that seed that you're planting and say, I have nothing to do with the output of this seed. That's a much bigger function than I am. I'm here to plant it and I'm hoping that I can come back and harvest something 30 fold, uh, 60 fold, 100 fold. Wow. Yeah. That's super man. That's really, really dope. Everything you just said is super dope. Just facing the fear. Like, you know the fear is there. It's there. It's there. It's, it's, it's always there. It's always there. But you just, you just step into it. You just step into it. I, 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 can't, I can't believe that you feel these same things because that's what it looks like from my side. That's what it looks like from our side, you know? Yeah, when, yeah. when you're starting, like for instance, I've, I've gotten, I, 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 I think I feel, I feel I'm extremely privileged to hang out with you for an hour every day. That's, that's such a privilege for me. Um, and and to, 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 to be like, um, you know, part of the reason why we do the Bible study back, back in the day in, 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 in Bapo was like, we're trying to keep these kids out of the club and off the bottle. Yes. And we used to feel we have succeeded. Mm -hmm. Our gender club, yeah. our lady, like, our work is done. Hey, hallelujah. Look at the wonderful work that the Lord is doing, especially these young people. Hey, 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 hey. Yes. So many things out there. But then, you know, um, I've, I've seen you. I've seen you grow into this person that you are now. You know, running a business and running a whole wellness machine that's blessing dozens of people every day, and in the grander scheme of things, hundreds, thousands of people who are audiences to what you're doing. People who will never show up for a workout are still blessed by the work that you do. So I can't understand how. Like, wait, he feels fear as well. Wait, what? Heard what? <laughs> think, I don't understand. Just, just, just like you, just like most people that, that have to put themselves out there every day, you're, you're led by the light, right? You're, you're led... Wow. You're led by, by seeing how it looks on people's faces, right? Right. So right. the Zoom workouts were never, ever part of my 2020 plan, ever. <laughs> And the people just kept asking and asking, how can you still feel your light within this pandemic? Yeah, we, without being able to see you physically, we still want to feel that impact uh, of, of the work that you put out. Um, so yeah, every single morning when I, when I start that Zoom call and I say good morning, there is fear behind it. There is like, whoa, have I programmed something that is just not possible to do? Or uh, I just don't feel like it. Even, even me, I don't feel like working out today. And how am I going to get <laughs> these 12, 15 people to work out as well? Um, so that's like, you know, what, what you just talking, what, what you just spoken about, um, getting up on the stage every two months and speaking to hundreds of people and actually being funny and you said making people laugh is easy it's not easy my guy it's not i think <laughs> yeah. I'm a humorous guy. i value humor and but i know i can't get on the stage every time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, it's, it's okay we got you we got you we're doing this for you <laughs> that's pretty awesome man Okay, um, so when, when it comes awesome. to, to the wellness, right, your all around wellness, how does Mugash ensure that he stays afloat? Um, and, and you can talk about things you do on a daily basis, things you have tried mm -hmm. before, um, things that you want to do in the future. Um, and it can be from a nutrition standpoint to working mm -hmm. out to maybe meditation if you subscribe to that. How, how, what, 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 what do you do to, to ensure that you're constantly putting out this amazing work that you do? 
That's awesome. That's a good question. I, and, and just like every other question, I'm going to answer it in a very roundabout way, but I promise I'll bring it home. Yeah. Um, there's something that you said during one of the workouts that I, I, I still have not forgotten. Um, again, growing up, 1980s, 1990s, 2000, um, uh, uh, Kenya, um, uh, growing up under a certain political system, a certain societal, cultural system, a certain um, economic system, and a certain religious system. I, I think it's those four things that, that, that sort of shaped who we are. Yeah. Um, education, religion, society, culture, and uh, politics. Um, so we, oh, and to some extent entertainment. Wait, how can I forget what it is that I do? To some extent entertainment. So all of these, all of these things to some extent give you certain ideas about how the world works. And if there's one thing, if there's one word that, that really scares me to this day, it's the word discipline. Mm -hmm. And because the discipline, the word discipline has such negative connotations to it. Mm -hmm. um, I remember going to high school, I went to changes, the Nana school. And um, I, I, I'd come from a private Catholic school. Um, all the stuff that I was going to experience in high school at that point was the stuff that you saw on TV or, or, or with cousins that went to public schools and they'd say things or neighbors. And, you know, and, and I'd never, I really, I really my, my, my definition of, of discipline in a Catholic school um, and the definition of discipline in a national public school, very, very different. Discipline in national public school was show up to class late, utachapwa. Do this, that, or the other late, utachapwa. That's the thing of discipline. So discipline was authoritarian. It was your butt is stinging because you've been chapwad three times, like you've been caned three times. Yeah, we got caned a lot, man. Wow. Hey, Mazi. Surely it will go to the chapwa, kamambuzi, which was crazy. Um, that became the definition of discipline. So discipline, oh, and then let's not even talk about discipline within the Christian subculture. That's a whole other thing, man. So I've always had this. It's crazy, man. <laughs> so I don't know how you survived, Isaac. <laughs> Um, so you said something, you said something and, and you said discipline will always show up for you. If there's something that will never let you down, it's discipline. And then I hear what Russell Brand talks about and he says that discipline is a form of self-care, of self-love. And I'm like, how are you associating positive connotations with this word that I only have negative associations with? Sorry, it's a chopper flying. Um, and it got, it got me when I, I looked in the mirror and I was like, man, I can see gains on my body now. I can see it. If you show up, that's, that's the discipline aspect of it. If you're loving yourself enough to put off something like sleep or junk food um, for the sake of something bigger, that bigger thing will always show up for you. And I'm like, man, okay, I get it. I understand. So my roundabout way of saying is that I still have not attained discipline. So a lot of the stuff that I do for my wellness are very led by the light, but are very erratic. Mm -hmm. that's it the one thing that I know I'm consistent at doing and this is going to feel this is going to sound almost like crazy mm -hmm. is there is I don't think that the world in 2020 is putting a huge well the world in 2019 2020 taught us things and I think people are now waking up mm -hmm. but it's necessary to feel things mm -hmm. it's, it's necessary to be present to what you're feeling mm -hmm. to be able to not judge it to know that a lot of the things that we feel, a lot of the ways that we react are not of our doing. It's all we know how to do with what we were given, with what we were taught by people who only knew what to do with what, we give, what they were given, what we were taught, who were taught by people who only knew and it just keeps going back and back. And so you start to realize that this world that's presented to you as real isn't, and you still have to go back inside to sort of, you know, it's such a weird thing, you have to go back inside to sort of calibrate and, and identify what's going on and find some truthfulness yeah. for it by your own definition. That is not easy work, Isaac. It requires someone to be present. It requires for you to confront ugly things. It requires for you to question yourself and be comf comfortable with the questioning. It requires you to start a journey whose ending you don't know. Mm. And I feel like I'm taking that journey every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, just yesterday, I had a very, very close um, a, a conversation with a very close um, uh, a friend of mine who was calling me out on some things that they didn't like that I did. And that was painful. It was really, really painful. I had to be present to a lot of, 
ugly things about myself. And I, and I was so grateful that the person extended a lot of space for me to express myself and say, yo, when I was doing this stuff that you considered really hurtful, um, what I was doing was reacting from, uh, from this place. Yeah. For me to be able to define what that place was, I have to go through the journey of being like, yo, I remember at one point I went through this or I was subjected to this or this is what it was like growing up. And that was not nice. It was not, I mean, this Corona period has been so hard, man. Um, we've had to sit and wonder what, what's the future going to look like? Why is my work that's been consumed by everyone the first thing to get pulled away? Our livelihoods are the first ones, or among the very first ones to be like, oh man, we're gonna have to get, get, get rid of that, man. Or we're gonna have to cancel all public gatherings. All entertainment options have to be revised now. And the way I was making some sort of income, all of it, all of those lines just went cold. And that was hard to just sit with myself and be like, okay, aside from the destruction of the work, the destruction of uh, monetary gains, the destruction of going to Mercury, Mercury on a Friday night, mm -hmm. um, uh, the destruction of smoking up every so often, uh, because that enables you to feel easy. When all the escape routes are closed, what do you do? What do you have? All you have is yourself. So I have to hang out with myself every so often. It doesn't always take the same form. Sometimes it'll take the form of meditation where I'm, I'm, I'm quieting and I'm watching the mind because really that's what meditation is. And meditation is not sitting with your legs crossed. Um, yes, that is involved, but sometimes it's doing the dishes. Sometimes it's taking a long walk. Sometimes it's taking out a book and just writing what comes to your mind first. You're really, really facing things. So being present and facing things and feeling things, dude, that for me has become my number one go-to okay. of self-care. Okay. And, and it's not, I'm not saying that it's pleasurable. It's hard, but I, it's a one thing that I know at the end, even if we're talking about 2025, there'll be some difficult things I subjected myself to, some difficult thoughts, some difficult questions that I subjected myself to in 2020, whose answers are going to show in 2025. But I'm so glad I took the time in 2020. I'm only reaping benefits for stuff that I suffered through many years ago. Because I was like, wait, um, as, as, a, as a 17 year old, an 18 year old, I've never had a girlfriend in my life. Um, I'm, I'm not the most popular kid. Um, I didn't do too, too well in my KCSE. My parents are mad at me. I wrote this very passionate journal entry um, saying, Lord, what's wrong with me? Why am I so out of place, so out of line with what everyone else is doing? Why can't I ever keep up with what's, what, what's, the, what's, what's, what's the MO? What's the world's MO right now? I, I can never ever keep up with that. Everyone is, 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 more, is cooler, more present, more aware of the world than I am. And yet here I am just being a freaking disappointment. And I remember writing on my little notebook, I hate myself, I hate myself, I hate myself. And I was like, why am I doing this? Why can't I just cover it up with other people? Why do I feel things so much? Um, only literally, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old, man. Literally more than two decades later, I'm seeing the fruits of that stuff coming to, to life now because I'm like, ah, shucks, man. By putting myself through all that, I, I stayed real. I, 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 stayed, I stayed open, I stayed authentic. Oh, man, you okay. were someone scare me. Authenticity is a scary one. <laughs> but I, I stayed authentic to the stuff I was feeling. Yeah. And I was like, if I, if, if I covered it up, like my, I saw people do, if, if, if someone had come to me and told me, if, if my 40-year-old self could visit that 18-year-old crying in his bed, I'd be like, dude, you wouldn't understand it now, but everyone is going through what you're going through right now. What makes the difference is how you react to it going forward. So stay real, stay true to what you're, you're going through. And I'm so glad that I stayed true because I was, I was telling this to a friend of mine, sometimes we don't know we are our own ancestors. We are showing up from the past, past versions of ourselves are showing up now. I love that, yeah. And, and showing up, yo, I might get a bit emotional saying this because those were hard times. I was trying to figure out the world and being like, why am I going through all this? But that little innocent 18 year old person shows up as an ancestor to me now. And I admire him for being, for staying true and feeling all those things because I'm benefiting from that now. So I, I would say that I, I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a sensible answer, but my very first menu of wellness is you, you, you can't fight the demons. You, you have to invite them in and sit with them and look at them and be like, yo, so what do we do now? That's, that's, that's my number one thing. Now, everything else stems from that. If it becomes overwhelming, I might need to work out. Yeah. I may need to eat well. I need to hydrate. I need to moisturize. 
Um, I'll, I'll meditate as much as I can, I'll journal. Now all of this stuff are just the day-to-day -day things, but all of it is coming down to the thing, how do we stay true? That's, it's a battle for your soul. How do you keep your soul alive? I, I don't think souls die. Just like you said, energy doesn't die. It's just transferred. It's not neither destroyed um, or not created, but how do you keep yourself a receptacle for creation to just keep happening rather than destruction? Hey. Yo, I'm gonna write that down. But yes, that's that's my self care. <laughs> that's my self care routine. I hope I answered your question. I think that that should be everyone's like a lot of your wellness should be rooted in that because I think um, yeah. so I speak to a lot of people about wellness just by virtue of what I do, and mm. um, people wanna reach for the eight eight minutes ab workout app from the Google Play Store, you know, uh, to fix why they're crying their, themselves to sleep, you know. Um, so oh, man. What, what, man. Would, what would you tell someone? Or yeah. if, if, you, if you would write a BuzzFeed article, right? Super <laughs> 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 diluted, step by step, or like five ways uh, to dilute you, uh, to watch your mind as a um and would it be would it be journaling would it be uh speaking to someone um uh, would it be not because i i feel like especially in this nairobi scene we live in a society where people are running are running away from stuff constantly really yeah, sure. not um so mm -hmm. how what what would you, what would you tell someone that wants to? They actually want to slow down. They want to stop. Like as you say, twenty twenty has forced everyone to stop. Um, but there are still people that are still running within within their small little cocoons. They are still ordering their global drinks and having their own little mercuries <laughs> within their home, running from whatever they're feeling. <laughs> so what what would you tell someone? How how do you get someone to stop and actually? Be consistent in feeling because that's just sitting, standing there and just receiving all those bullets every single day, um, or at least one hour a day is very hard. So I know my question mm. makes sense, but I, I I hope you can answer that. No, it does. It does. It does. It, does. it makes all the sense. It makes all the sense. Um, it makes all the sense. All of it. All of it. All of it. I I um. I'm every so often I um I'm I'm given the opportunity to to to, to like train people. Um, to, to coach people in public speaking, improv. And I love that at the beginning of the class, everyone thinks that they know what they are up for. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they think that we're going to do, this is how you speak louder. This is how you, um, you know, this is how you gain confidence, thinking that they, you know, you're gonna give them a one size fits so. all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's equivalent to the eight minute Google Play, Nini. They, they think that they're coming for the eight minute Google Play fix. Yeah. And uh, once I, I was sitting in for a writing workshop and the person, the first thing that we did, the very first thing that we did, the person asked us to write three short stories. And one of those three short stories was one of the earliest memories. And I wrote it down and it was, it was like, a, it was like probably one paragraph long. And it was a story about how when I was in kindergarten, no, in, in, in uh, yeah, in kindergarten, nursery school, um, I won up the bigger kid who could, there's this one kid, I even remember his name. I'm telling you, like, I have a weird memory, man. I, I know I have friends on Facebook, but this dude was the Otero. Mm -hmm. This guy was the, he was the Otero, like he was the Mark Mende. He was like the guy. He was bigger than all of us. He grew faster. Um, um, he, um, he was very, very smart. Um, and when for break time, because like, well, it was a really nice school, we, we, we were given like little cups of tea at break time. So, so you, you drank your tea and the tea was, was warm. It wasn't hot, but sometimes it was a little bit too hot and you couldn't down it. So we always knew, give your tea to Norbert. Oh, that's his name. Oh, I outed him. And like, give your tea to him and um, he'll finish it up for you. Because he was not always finished it first. And that became sort of his thing, like, hey. I'll finish your tea. And uh, one, one time, one time, I finished my tea before him. And ah. someone gave me their tea because they couldn't finish. 
and I was like, what? <laughs> and then I went and sort of sat next to him and I wanted a reaction. And he turned to me and said, I'm not your friend. And I was like, I am the man, I am the man, I'm the man. I got, I got him. Got I, got, I got under his skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him. So I wrote that story and I read it out and people were like, yo, that's a cool story. I'm like, really? okay, cool. I guess it's a good story. But then it's that, that whole process started me into going into a lot of childhood memories and it took me to good places and took me to dark places. Yeah. So the first thing I'll ask people is I'll tell them, write your earliest childhood memory, write a paragraph, whatever. And people will always say, I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't have a good memory. And I'll tell them, you know, sit with it, even if it's like a, that's a little tiny nugget of a thing. You can't remember the place, you can't remember the time, you can remember a feeling. That's those, you can always lean on those. You remember a feeling. Um, do that. And they'll write it, and then some, and then I'll tell them, okay, look at that, that feeling, I look at that memory. And I can bet you with enough time, give yourself enough time, you realize that that memory that you wrote that you could access easily in the course of 15 minutes becomes a sort of beacon like a bit of a path to even more memories earlier memories mm -hmm. and i keep telling them it's very likely that that memory is going to be a painful one mm -hmm. because we learn as kids we're, we're so in the moment we don't have to keep a bank of memories yeah. but the moment your brain starts recording things it's recording it because safety you've just done something that 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 you have messed up so spectacularly that the people on your side, whether it's your parental figures, whether it's a person taking care of you at that point, whether it's siblings, whether it's friends, are going to, whether it's teachers, are going to berate you so strongly that you'll be like, I can never do this again. Never. And that becomes, that's really where the process of your socialization begins because you extend your life to staying safe and never feeling that feeling again. I tell people, go back to that place and you will start to discover why you exist. Because those, that is tied to your purpose. It's tied to your purpose. The reason why someone said or did something that was so hurtful to the core of who you were was because they stood in the way of that thing. And your socialization was about keeping that thing quiet and yeah. keeping it. Mm. Let's keep it under wraps just so that you can survive. If you find that thing, you've taken the first steps to finding your purpose. And if I was to write a BuzzFeed article, I'd be like, keep going back to the stuff that gives you so much pain, so much discomfort, so much unease, so much questioning of yourself. Because somewhere in that mark, somewhere in that matope, takataka, matogodandio, yeah. somewhere in that sewage, there's like a little gem of who you really are. It's just through no fault of your own, you've had to bury it under so many things because um, someone who probably had the best interests for you had to put you in line because they saw the world ahead of you and thought you're not going to survive if you do this thing or you might have caught someone on a bad day you might have pissed someone off you might have caught someone who was going through their own thing and your rambunctious real unfettered untethered unleashed life was so not in keeping with what they were going through at that point that they said you will never be this person again and they probably argued it out of you or beat it out of you, whatever. This is, this is the reality of, of all our lives. And I'll be like, keep going back to that thing. Mm -hmm. And dude, I can't, I can't stop uh, referring to your TEDx talk because that's what I got out of what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think towards the end you said, yeah, I've, I've done a triathlon, I've jumped off a plane, I've bungee jumped, I've done all these things, I've started a business, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a fitness journey. Uh, but the thing, the thing that has shown up all the time is I've always had to face a discomfort of some sort to go to the next thing. And I, my BuzzFeed article is from a place of love, from a place of full acceptance, do whatever it is that you can to get to that point where you will face that thing and accept who that person was and who that person stopped being because of the person that you are today. The things that you had to put in your own way to survive. It's fine. You are doing the best that you could. If you can approach yourself with all the compassion, all the self-love, every single safe space that you can create for yourself, do it. And then you start to see your light come out. And no one is going to stop it. Like light, that's how light is. That's, that's how light is. Um, 
again, quoting the Bible, this is no light puts up a light and puts it under a bushel. Uh, they, they, they turn on that light and they put it somewhere where all can see. That's the nature of light. Once you found your light, you and the people around you will now start doing things where that light will just keep shining and shining and shining. That's, that's, that's how it goes. That's, that's my BuzzFeed article. Again, I'm not sure it makes sense, but it makes all the that's, sense. Uh, and it, and it, that's it. it. It's brilliant um, because what, what you talked about um, really reigns true, especially for people in the creative industry. When you watch someone perform, like I, I've gotten it when I've, when I've attended BYSS. I wouldn't right, when, right. You know, uh, watch uh, uh, Lisa or, or, or watch it's magic. Watch Lizzo uh, perform. Like I actually feel a sense of fear because I'm scared of how comfortable they are in their skin uh, or how connected they are to their light. Like this. There's no separation. There's, there's a complete right. overlap who they are and why they are put on this planet. When you meet someone like right. that, you can feel it. it, it it's so, I'm not getting good. It's, it's, it's like literally so, um, it's such a high vibration that you feel from them. Yeah. But you, you can't get there without going through that series. You are going through that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think what you said is. is yeah. No worries, man. Thank you. Oh, man. I'm enjoying this conversation very much. <laughs> Thank you. So, so as we close, as we close, yeah. Um, this is my question. Okay, before we get there, what is your skincare routine? Because your skin is fantastic. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, share butter and, and water. Share yeah, butter, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's really it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really <laughs> forever. Forever. That that's it, dude. I, I um, I, I again thanks to the. I I, I, I didn't. It's not far from here. I'll just struggle a bit after this is done, but um. Uh, be, before getting on one of your uh, workout routines, is, is things that have to be in the room. After I have a towel, after I have my water bottle, um, I have to have what else? After the towel, the water bottle, after I have a um, duster, a rag. Yeah, for the sweat. Uh, yeah, kusa fish sweat. And um, and I need um, tissues because somehow I don't know I, I don't know why, but my nose will only start running, man. Um, just just all the neighbor. God, like this, just sweat and snot everywhere. So I have to always have my tissues close by. Um, so, so, so the water thing. I wasn't drinking too much water, but um, you know, as a result of just the necessity, it's almost like your body starts to realize, oh, we like this, and then desires more of it. Um, and then, uh, and then the shea butter. You know, I, I, I bought some to support a friend's business, and then realize, hey, it's I what? see what the hype is about. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. That's yeah, awesome. that's it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I asked that question just to lighten the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, were, Good one. we were going into that zone <laughs> that we might not come out of. <laughs> All right, right. Good one. Good one. What yeah. are you up to now? Where can we find you? What are you doing that we can support? Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, that's, that's another good question. Um, I um, man, I I have to say I'm 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 now in a point where I'm having to redefine what relationship with social media is because I'm like, yo, everything is just becoming more and more absurd and more and more artificial. And that's, that's a little bit scary. Um, I, 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 Bitty said it once, Bitty, I, I love what he had to say when he was talking about the whole Mark Mende thing and how they used organic sort of, um, they, they just used organic ways of getting it out there. And they said, and he said something, he said, uh, back then when we were releasing the Hahe video, um, Social media did what it said it was doing. Um, it was connecting people. Um, it was enabling people to share the stuff that they thought was cool. You know, back then we had walls, and you go and went into someone else's wall, and people used the book, whatever that was. Um, and and, and the, uh, 
we did. We really did. And and we played vampires versus werewolves and uh, it, it was nice and cool and simple. Um, so so anyway, that, uh, that's it. Uh, um, off, off, off of the soapbox. I can, I can be found on social media at at it's Mugambi. That's I T S Mugambi. Um, on Instagram, on on uh, Twitter. Um, my, my website is itsmugambi.com. Just simply itsmugambi.com. And there's some things I enjoy doing. I host uh, screenings of, of of movies every Monday. Um, I used to do it at K1 um, every every single Monday, and um, then we moved it online. And I'm really happy to say I've managed to host uh, a film screening every single Monday from April to now. That's a lot of movies, man. That's a lot of Mondays. Oh. It's it's more than six, seven, probably eight months. Eight months of consistent screenings every single Monday. I'm really really happy about that. Yeah. Um, but we, we're going to be making our way back to K1 soon. So you know, come out. Monday movie nights, I, I think they'll be starting 7, 7.30. So come out, watch a movie. Um, people love to, I, I love to have people come in and watch film and talk about it afterwards. It's a beautiful process. Yeah, yeah. I'm also in the process of writing my next film. Woo. It was something I was very afraid of putting out there, but it's early, early stages of writing and that's looking promising. Um, if all goes well, you'll be hearing about a film called Disco Matanga. Uh, coming out, and I called it that before the Saudi Soul song, by the way, way ah. before the Saudi Soul song. I'm, I'm not borrowing this from Saudi Soul. I even have evidence. I've had documents with dates on them, and you can check the metadata or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm also doing a bit of a stage, stage, some virtual stage work, which I can't talk about much right now, but you're going to see it pretty soon. Uh, but I've just to put it this way, and, and I guess this is the first time I'm putting it this way, um, I've found that, you know, again, just like you said, when light, let your light shine, other people's light shines, and you see, you connect with other people whose light is shining, and soon you want to make your lights shine together. So there's a lot of collaborations that I'm getting into that are pretty exciting uh, over the next few months. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I keep sharing the stuff that I'm doing um, on, on, on social media where I can. Um, it's not always an all the time thing because I'm sure you understand a lot of the work that we're doing is being done in private. It's being done in in painful, dark little spaces that only we can be in. And before we can bring our light out or bring our work out, it, it takes a bit of time. So I'm in that stage now. A COVID has been really difficult, man. Part of the reason why I started doing the workouts, the Hunja Active workouts is because I was like, if I don't have an hour yeah. of the day where I'm having a release and I'm going to go crazy. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've had my battles with, um, with, with, with men, mental health. Um, got, got recently diagnosed with um, a depression and anxiety that was bordering on, bordering, bordering hadn't gotten that, was bordering on severe. Um, and, um, and, 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 the, and the workouts have, have really been like a counterbalance to that. Mm. Um, so, so thank you, thank you so much for the work you're doing. I, I, I don't think everyone tells you just how much the work means to us, but for me, it's kept me. It's one of the things that has kept me sane. Mm. When the weather was good, when COVID was starting, we could take walks in the evening. When curfew was at seven, and th that was nice. You're walking in the sun, and it felt good. But as the world is going back to normal, and everything is crowded outside, um, soon all you have is the workouts, man, and and that's the thing that's keeping me sane. Um, this is just a bit of trivia. It doesn't really mean anything, but um, the engage talk that you talked about, I almost pulled out like when I was about half an hour from getting on stage, I oh. turned to Agatha, one of the organizers of engage. And I'm like, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. And I told her my meds are kicking in. She's like, meds, what meds? And I said, antidepressants. And she looked at me like, what? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, okay, okay. Yeah. If you need time, we're still going to be here filming tomorrow. If you need to be here tomorrow, do you know you can come tomorrow? It's fine. And I was like, no, 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 I've come. Let's just see where this whole thing goes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've, I've not answered your question completely, but I've, I've, I've sort of segued into a thing where I, 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 the work exists in this very unsure, very okay. unsteady places. So it, it it comes out quite erratically. But when it comes out, yeah, I'll, I'll be making as much noise about it as I can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, as I said, for making the time. Thank you for your openness. Um, and thank you for 
like dude you 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 don't stop sharing your light i've never known you just to 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 oh man be a closed book um and i'm not uh, thank you never like you always trying to find ways to impact human hands you know and i well, and i mean that like from a grandiose point of view you know I'm, oh, man <laughs> it's not hyperbole it's it's literally yeah trying to impact the world and all the seeds that you put out there some have landed there some have landed here so on and so forth um like this this is this is one line that this guy said uh, dr miles monroe um this uh, this uh, guy um pastor public speaker yep and he said um, let yep. let your seed be not only grow into a tree but a forest and and i really believe when it's all said and done uh my guy you have going to your winter your forest <laughs> yeah man and with your forest because i met you and so on and so forth and the world is going to to really, the world is grateful for you so please continue doing that um and and keep keep showing up keep showing up i can't wait to see all the work that you put out uh, this year and the year after um and continue collaborating because I think the work that that you guys have done uh, and like as in like the things the things that you've done in the last 10 years my like, guy it's, it's ridiculous <laughs> it's, it's have, crazy man they have shaped like the entertainment culture of in our, in our country um and and you you've seen the world because of that and the world has seen you so continue doing what you do hey thank you man Thank you so much. Ah oh, man, I really appreciate that. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Man. This has been fun. Thank you so much for having me. This is this is really been delightful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um uh, and show up tomorrow morning. It'll be a great workout. I, <laughs> I will. Oh man, I will. Oh gosh. That the record state that it's still a struggle every single time. But yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh man, you said so so many meaningful things. So I'm 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 really um I'm I'm fired up. It's it's going to finish in about that feeling is finishing about half an hour, but still <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll be there showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, yeah. so, so. yeah. man. All right, yo. Who's here? I was